Welcome to the Forever Cash Life Real Estate Investing Podcast with your hosts, Jack and Michelle Bosch. Together, let's uncover the secrets to building true wealth through real estate and living a purpose-driven life. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Forever Cash Life Real Estate Podcast. Your host is yours truly, Jack Bosch here, and we are going to talk today about communication. We're going to talk about communication between spouses, for that matter. So, for example, here's the deal. Michelle and I run this business together, right? We have been married for over 18 years, going on almost 19 years now. We have been uh, working together in this business for 17 of those years, right? And... Uh, and we work from home. This is my home office. Michelle has her home office actually almost right above me here. Um, and we are, uh, we've always worked from home. We have had an office. We have had an office for a while ago where we used to go together, where we had up to like 35 people work there in this office for us. And, um, and then we transitioned into a smaller office and became more virtual. And then we almost dismantled our office. And all we have left is like one little hundred square foot room where it's like storage and files and the important files and stuff like that is there in a shared office space, one of these Regis office spaces that you see all over the US. And uh, we, uh, but, but mostly we work alone from home. Now, here's the thing. The key to making business as a couple work, in my opinion, is to have obviously like mutual respect and mutual um, appreciation for what, for what each other do, for, for each other's smartness, for each other's skills and those things. But also it's um, to have clearly defined roles, right? Clearly defined roles. We actually, the times when we had, uh, the times when, when we, when we, crash and when we when we collide, uh, collide and when we have fights and things like that over business is when we both want to take the lead in a project taking it in well often different directions right so as a result what we have done is we had we had actually had an interesting uh, transition so early on Michelle was the operations manager because she has a superior skill in that area. She's an amazing operations manager. And I was more like the CEO. I was like looking at, we're going to go into this area now for land deals and into that area for land deals. And I would kind of lead the way. It's kind of like in, in what properties we buy, which areas we go. And Michelle would make sure that everything happens and everything is done. However, here's something that happens over time that actually burned Michelle out because even though she's very, very good at it, she's not from her heart a operations manager. So now actually we swap those two areas and now she is the one with the vision and she is the one uh, being in lots of masterminds and lots of things like that and, 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 and really expanding her mind about the possibilities of what we can do and I'm the one making sure things are actually happening. So obviously we have a team. It's not I'm making sure things are happening. I may perhaps making sure things are happening, but I'm obviously not making it all happen because we have a team around it. We have guys work with us for 13 years already. We have an amazing team uh, of over 25 people all over the world that work with us in different capacities. Plus we have property management teams for our marketing family properties in the different locations and, and so on. So if you add all of those up together, we probably have over 50 people that work with us in, in the variation, various capacities. Now, having said that, the key is still the same. If we both want to be operations managers, we both got to go fight over ways how to make things happen. If we both want to be the CEOs, we got to fight over ways on which direction to take the company. So now what we do is Michelle is really like the visionary. Michelle is the one that that is uh, thinking about the directions we should take in, thinking about new ideas to bring our programs and bring our, our land pieces and, and expand in the, uh, and, and, and the apartment complex market and so on. And then, uh, and then I'm the one bringing together. Or if we can do a distinction where, where we take leads in different areas, then Michelle is the lead in the land and in the education area. And I'm perhaps a little bit more of the lead in the multifamily area, right? But in, in either case, I'm now the one that, that, that operates it. Now, what does it have to do with you? This is not about us. This is nothing. What it, what it has to do with you is, is that if you're working with your, with your spouse, then you want to kind of look at that. If you're both doing the exact same activities, then there's chances of the conflict is much 
larger. If one of them, one of you takes the takes care of the sales and the other one takes care of the purchases, then that's a role definition. And that's how we early on define it. There wasn't like a CEO and operations manager even early on. It was just two people doing the land deals, right? It was Michelle and I figuring out how to do this land business and then doing these land deals. So during that time, what we did is naturally because I was traveling 100% and Michelle was here, she took care of the more paper intensive things like, uh, like, like the research and working with the title companies doing title searches and, and, and so on. And I took care of the more virtual things, which back then when there wasn't all these technology methods that are out, out right now was more like I was contacting the counties. I was getting listing lists. I was, and I was uh, selling the properties and creating like at midnight, I was creating listings. I, if, if you want to talk to the title company, you can't talk to them at midnight. You have to talk to them at 1 or 2 or 3 p.m. Well, at 1 or 2 or 3 p.m., I was in meetings while well, Michelle could step out of uh, doing her master's, could step out, or when she quit her job and started doing this full-time to get me free from my job, she was able to do that during those days. So it was a natural progression of where does the business need us, and it was a better fit for me to be in the marketing side and Michelle to be in that side. Now, as we built a team around that, uh, that obviously then changed, right? As we started doing big auctions, that changes. And the same is for you. So perhaps if you are, um, there's often a tendency I see that the woman gets put into the role of the detail-oriented organizing kind of person. And I want to challenge that a little bit here because at the end of the day, you really, this is a, this is a role because often women through society have been pushed into that role of housekeeper, of keeping everything organized and keeping the kids organized. So they have learned to be organized, but it's not a trait that naturally women have more than men, right? So, so I would challenge that in your relationship, if you're working as a spouse together, then truly ask yourself, what is the part that you guys enjoy most and if one truly enjoys the detail or detailed work more and one is truly a little bit more the creative person and and and, and more like the writer kind of person then then it makes sense to to divide it by that irrespective of the gender that likes one or the other role right don't let yourself to get pushed into still existing um like gender roles because they're a bunch of bullshit anyway. So uh, instead, just just do divide up and conquer the way you really uh, see that happening. Now, in terms of um, how we communicate so that we don't rip each other's heads off on an ongoing basis, uh, the, the way I can say is we have been ripping each other's head off occasionally. It does happen in the best families. It, it just, that's just how it goes, right? But uh, it does, um, the, the way to deal with that is to be aware of the state that the other person is in. So for example, let's say we have a new apartment complex right now. As in, if anything, I'm taking a little bit the lead on there. I'm, I'm again, I'm traveling more out there, looking at properties, uh, meeting with property managers, um, dabbing the financial analysis, putting together the brochures and things like that. And Michelle is more of the fundraising side, but also she's on the strategic side. She knows which market is doing well and which not and so on. And, and, um, and so, so when I run an analysis on a property, I always, always 100% run it by Michelle. Or if Michelle runs an analysis on a property, she runs it by me. Right. So when we do that, you don't just barge into somebody else, somebody else's space and sit down and say, like, I need to run this by you right now. Because if that person right now is in the middle of another thing, it takes them out of everything. They might have a deadline. They might, uh, they might be really dedicated to that afternoon to be for, to wanting to finish up like five listings for pieces of land, uh, five purchase agreements for, for or, or offers for land or, or whatever it is, or for, if, we're doing land flipping, of course, uh, or, or, or whatever it is. They might be busy in a project and you don't want to just barge in there. So what you want to do is you want to say, and we, we have, I believe we're doing a good job in that. You want to say, hey, honey, or hey, Jack, um, I will need your time uh, for this. And then it's like, okay, I give me 20 minutes or give me half an hour. And then I, if I remember, I literally set the alarm clock for that. And or so like, let's we literally make appointments. So like, I can I can meet with you at, as, let's say right now it's 9.30, I can meet with you at 10. 
So that gives me right now time to, to focus on what I need to focus, not have to worry about the other spouse or the spouse being upset or being, uh, being, uh, being like impatient or being just like uh, whatever it is. So, but now we set it. Does it work as a 10? Let's meet at 10. So now you have an appointment. And just like you have an appointment, everyone else, you honor that appointment in this case with your spouse. So you have the appointment and you give the other person the full attention. And it's the same the other way around. When I need the attention, it's like, hey, Michelle, do you have a moment? She's like, no, I'm in the middle of something. Okay, so how about we meet in 45 minutes? I can, and I, so 45 minutes uh, comes up. I send a quick message. Hey, we're meeting in five minutes. Literally, like I would meet with a coworker. And then I said, like, okay, come over. Here's what I want to talk to you about. Here's the different situations. I even sometimes write up a little bit, like almost like a mini agenda. So I can, uh, rarely, but uh, I should. Because it's like, okay, here's the three points we need to talk about. Number one, here's the situation. What do you think? And then what she thinks is usually just as smart, if not smarter than what I think, right? So therefore, I'm listening. Uh, it helps me think. It helps me. Th I, I, bring, I, I bring back what I, what I understand I hear. And, 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 and then we, we work it through. We come up with a, with a mutual agreement that, okay, this is, the, this is the solution, this is what we want to do, so we do it. And that, that kind of way to communicate works really well, starting from a small parenting issue. It's like, hey, we have the following situation. Our daughter is doing boom, boom, boom. How do we fix this? Instead of like fixing it in the moment when we are upset and yelling at our daughter, which of course we never do, right? Uh, but uh, in reality, it happens, right? You, you just like uh, get frustrated. And, um, or, or is it, uh, but if we can catch it early, we can say like, okay, let's work out a plan that when, when we are, even, even we bring her in into the family, it's like, we figured out a plan. We're not happy how things are going on. You're messy. Your stuff is laying around and so on. What do we do? Can we dedicate every afternoon 10 minutes for you to clean up your stuff? It's like, yes, we can. Okay, great. And then it's like, if we do it, you get the reward. If we don't do it, there's no candy today, right? Okay, and then you can make it kind of like that. Now, of course, taking away the candy from your spouse might not be a good idea. So you want to treat them as an adult, of course. So, so therefore, when, when we have those meetings, when we're like, okay, we, we got to plan out the week. We got to plan out... Uh, we have this invitation there, we have that invitation there. So we, we coordinate our schedules. It's like, you know what, I don't really, I can't go there. Uh, uh, I, I don't really want to go there, whatever it is. So we, we, can, we can make these adjustments. And on the leadership side of things, it's the same thing. You like, you ask yourself, you have the meeting, you have something like, okay, I really, I see this opportunity. I see this opportunity. I'm really good at seeing big opportunities. And I see them on a daily basis. That means if I would do, if I would act on every single one of them, we, wouldn't be, we would be active in 10,000 different areas and not making progress in any one of them. So when I, we now have a pro process, if I see an opportunity, I go and put it on a list, and then I have a meeting with Michelle where I talk to her about it. And often by the time the meeting is, the idea doesn't sound as great anymore. So it gets crossed off. And then we can talk about it, and then, uh, and then we look through the ones and identify to the process the ones that have true, true merit. Then we ask ourselves a question, if that decision, if that going down that rabbit hole is going to prevent us, is going to cost us on another thing. What's the opportunity cost of it? And the opportunity cost is a concept that was being taught in business school that basically says that you can't do two things at the same time. If you go... If you go, if you have two appointments and, and one evening and they're both at the same time, you got to choose. So if you go to this one, the opportunity cost of that one is not being able to attend this one. Right? So if you take one, if you jump on one, if you take one job, you cannot take the other job if you have two job opportunities. Right? So the opportunity cost of this job is not being able to do that job. And the opportunity cost of one business opportunity is not give, being able to give your fullest to another opportunity uh, on that. Therefore, will, will, this one will suffer underneath, underneath it if you, take, if you go for that one. So you want to evaluate those things, and that only happens in the spirit of cooperation, the spirit of respect. And by you being able to allow your spouse to shut down ideas that you enthusiastically come forward with. But in the past, initially, Michelle would shut down my ideas Basically, say like, no, this is crap, and that would hurt my feelings. I said, like, in a sense, right? It would, uh, 
And um, and now I'm like a touchy feely guy, but it would sound like, oh man, and it's just like I'm not being appreciated and so on, right? And so, but since since we talked about that. The way we now do this is we basically talk about it and then the question comes up, okay, how much potential does this idea have? How much uh, can it really produce for us? How, what, 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 how will it affect our life? Our life with the, with the important things in our life, with our time, with the time with our family, uh, with our, uh, will it bring us closer to what we want to do in our life? Will it bring us closer to our financial goals? Will it bring us closer to our, uh, to our happiness goals? And if the answer is no, then even though it might be a valid idea, it will not be done. And then I'm actually at peace with not doing it because it it's just doesn't make sense. So again, going back to how do you solve that? First of all, in summary, you've got to have different roles in the company. It's got to be very clear who is the who is the visionary entrepreneur, kind of the, the CEO, and who is the implementer of your company. Now, again, and that can change over time. Initially, I was the visionary CEO, and Michelle was the implementer. Now Michelle is the visionary CEO, I'm the implementer, right? You see me more on videos than you see her, but she's, she's now on many more videos, as your own video channel, as your own podcast, and so on. But, uh, but, but that's how the transition that we have made so that she wouldn't get burned out and I actually... Uh, to a large degree, enjoy these activities. Even though I'm naturally not the implementer, I'm going there because I'm actually, um, yeah, because I'm actually enjoying a good part of it. So um, then uh, the, and then when you have, when you, when, you, when you ask for each other's time, do it in a way that you don't barge in. Do it in a way that's respectful. Do it in a way that allows the other person to finish what you're doing so that they can turn around and give you their full attention, right? That's, that's what you want to do. And then when you, um, when, you, when you make major decisions in life and major decisions or even, uh, yeah, major decisions, then, then make them together. Evaluate them from all different angles. Look at them together in the, in the light of what trajectory are you on in your life and what trajectory uh, and are those items going to help you in that trajectory of your life? Or are they distractions that you really rather should be getting rid of and it's the, so you can focus on the number one thing that matters most, whatever that may be in your life, right? So these are some of the things that, um, that, we, that, that we talk about. Also, in a sense, um, for example, I'm... Uh, becoming a little bit more of a morning person than I was. So I'm now the person bringing my daughter to school every morning. That's a role, uh, role differentiation that allows Michelle to take a little slower morning, which is something she needs in order to be at her full, full, full capacity and full, full, um, full potential, right? And I enjoy driving, spending the time with my daughter, bringing her to school, and then having about a 20-minute drive on my way back, because she goes to school a little bit further away, having that drive home where I can listen to an audiobook, where I can listen to, um, to where I can do a few, already a few phone calls, and already get to, the, get to going. Because you also want to know, and that's the last thing I cover, you also want to know each, uh, each other from your personality or from the way you, you operate in this world. For example, I'm a quick start. So there's this test that we take and everyone in our team tests. It's a Colby test, Colby with K, K-O-L-B-E. And they take the Colby A test, which costs about $49. And uh, this test tells you in four areas of your life how you take action. Well, the, the way it, uh, it turns like that I take action is by literally taking action. So the mornings when I wake up, the first thing I want to do is take action. So I take action by taking my daughter to school. I take action by doing a few phone calls, by listening to some to some audiobooks and things. So by the time I come home, I am now ready to listen. I'm ready to, to now spend time with Michelle and listening to her things. At the same time, she is a taking action by doing research, right? So she might be spending that time doing some research and so on. So I can come in with her in the morning at 8 a.m. with a meeting with a bunch of stuff. No, it needs to be research first. So, 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 et cetera, et cetera. So by knowing each other and your own tendency and your own needs, that also you adjust your daily schedules for that and you find that time in the schedule of the day we're both at the, at the best, we're both at time to already get the things that are important to each other done and then you meet and then you talk about things and then you can discuss those with a few tools around them like for example that parking lot sheet for, the, for my crazy ideas, um, like uh, a, a list of research that needs to be done 
to to uh, to to cover Michelle's idea, uh, cover Michelle's needs, and so on. And then we get, and then we come up with two reasons, uh, with with really good uh, decisions um, that that we then, in mutual agreement, can move forward with. That doesn't mean that we both do the same role. That means in our in the moment, I'm the implementer with our team. Obviously, our team implements most, but I'm the one making sure it's being implemented. And Michelle is is finding these great new ideas for us to drive our business forward. So with that said, I hope that helps uh, um, understand a little bit how you communicate, how we can communicate as a couple without killing each other. And then one other thing we do is we try to do occasionally, we try, we, we try to do, we actually go out to eat a lot. And when we go out to eat, we do one thing. Everyone takes their phone and puts it in the, in the middle and everyone, all the phones go together. So grandma's with up, my parents are, all the phones go in the middle. We're doing what we call a phone stack. And then the phones are stay away for the length of the dinner. Right? And during that time, that gives us now time to talk about things and to talk about usually sometimes business, but not business if our daughter's with us, and, and to just enjoy each other's presence outside of a business environment. All right. So with that, hope that you enjoyed that. Um, this is one episode of the Forever Cash Life Real Estate Podcast. This one wasn't about business, but at the same time, it was because if you work with your spouse, which a lot of our students work with their spouses, then it's very important to, to build those boundaries, to build those communication methods so that you can, so that you don't hate each other after a while, but you can actually love each other more and are more successful together. All right, with that, bye-bye. And again, if you enjoyed that, give us a thumbs up. Um, give us, share it with your friends, share it uh, on social media so we can have more viewers of our Forever Cash Life Real Estate Podcast. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Enjoyed this episode? Then make sure you like, subscribe, and post your comments and questions below the video. We're looking forward to hearing from you.